not bind his arms or legs as I bury him in a shallow grave. He won't know that he's dying. I don't need him to. This is my design. G'day peeps, welcome to Villain Rap Sheet. Today, I look at Eldon Stamets, the fungi killer from NBC's 2013 television series, Hannibal. The series is of course based off the infamous fictional cannibal Dr. Hannibal Lecter, created by author Thomas Harris. He was introduced to the world in the 1981 novel Red Dragon, but most famously is played by Anthony Hopkins in the 1991 film Silence of the Lambs. The first season of Hannibal follows the FBI profiling specialist Will Graham, played by Hugh Dancy, who is especially skilled at empathising with the killers he helps hunt and as a result is particularly sensitive. So to help him, the FBI's Morpheus employs the help of psychiatrist Hannibal Lecter, played by Mads Mikkelsen. Arguably, he employs Hannibal for all the fancy dinner parties we'll see throughout the show. Loin, served with a Cumberland sauce of red fruits. Uh, loin, what kind? Just don't ask what meat's on the menu. Pork. Hmm, yeah, sure it's pork. Also, all the eating scenes give way to great dinner conversation zingers, such as... Well, next time, bring your wife. I'd love to have you both for dinner. Thank you. Hmm, yeah, I see what you did there. Anyway, all this talk of food brings us to the killer in question. He appears in Hannibal's second episode titled Amuse Bouche, which basically means a bite before the appetizer. It all starts when a bunch of kids search the forest for some hidden weed crops, but stumble upon a hidden mushroom garden. And so the FBI and Will Graham are called in. With the power of TV show science, it's quickly deduced that the killer is the local friendly pharmacist named Eldon Stamets, played by Aidan Devine. You can just tell he puts the fun into fun guy, but he hardly gets any screen time. Regardless, he makes a fascinating villain. So let's check out his motives, powers, and crimes. The first thing understood about Stamets is that it's all about the fungi. His garden victims were just a means to cultivate shrooms. He considers mycillum, which is the root system of mushrooms, as capable of making some sort of telepathic connection. So how did he attempt to achieve this? Well, basically, he put diabetic people into a coma, bury them in compost, keep them barely alive with air tubes, and intravenously feed them with sugar water. Which apparently mushrooms love more than diabetics. Then I suppose by burying them in a line, over time the mycelium will make some sort of transference from one victim to the next, then slowly evolve into some sort of super fungal humanoid monster. It's ingenious. Creators actually revealed that Eldon Stamets was based off a real mycologist named Paul Stamets. His seminar, titled Six Ways Mushrooms Can Save the World, is quite a trip and actually worth a watch. The mycelium is sentient. It knows that you are there. When you walk across landscapes, it leaps up in the aftermath of your footstep. Now, just add a little homicide and psychopathic tendencies. If you walk through a field of mycelium, they know you are there. They know you are there. The spores reach for you as you walk by. I know who you're reaching for. I know. Abigail Hobbs. You should have let me plant her. You can see where they got the inspiration from. So, while a little crazy, Growing a mushroom garden from comatose diabetics is completely rational, if the motive is to make connections through mycelium. Any questions? No? Good. I had something that none of the other murders had. Motive. 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 Good work. Good uh, teamwork, guys. Up top. Up top. Motive. Yes. Motive. 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 I'm out. Okay. <laughs> Stamets really only has one power, and that is the assumed authority that comes with being a pharmacist. Supposedly, all his victims went into diabetic comas after being given the wrong kind of insulin, or none at all. Although, if this scene is any example, it's not a convincing method. Oh, oh just the wrong one, just... Uh-oh. 
He just changes a bottle labelled long acting with rapid acting insulin. So she just needs to learn to read labels and the devious plot is foiled. Next he gives her the prescription receipt which is addressed to some guy called Aaron with completely unrelated drugs and she signs for it as well. Essentially all his victims were vulnerable, perhaps illiterate and completely unaware when Eldon killed them. Okay let's break down his crimes. His garden had nine people. Eight died in the soil, one died on the way to hospital. <laughs> he put all of them into a coma and left them to die from kidney failure as he didn't treat their diabetic condition. That's a charge of murder times nine, since he initiated their condition, then prevented aid to their well-being. As we already covered, Stamet gave this lady named Gretchen Speck the wrong medication. As an isolated crime, he is poisoning by medication tampering, and this could be upgraded with an intent to murder. Once Gretchen is in a coma, he shoves her in his car boot, so that's an abduction charge. During a conversation between shady journalist Freddie Lowndes and the detective she got suspended, Shamitz abruptly walks up to the detective and shoots him in the head. Right now, future you is thanking me. <laughs> I read your article. Tell me about Will Graham. I mean, that's one way to butt into a conversation and rack up another murder charge. He does this to interrogate the journalist about Will Graham's close relationship with a girl in a coma, Abigail Hobbs. Not one to pass up the opportunity to plant a comatose patient, he sneaks into a hospital. Perhaps one of the lamest abduction attempts ever committed, he gets Abigail about two corridors before being shot. So that's the short but fairly creative story of Eldon Stamets. Who says you can't be a villain and be a fun guy? If there's anything to learn from him, I'd say read the labels of medication you get from the pharmacy and eating mushrooms is basically murder. They're sentient beings. Hannibal is a great series and I'll probably try to profile more villains at some stage. Take care and thanks for watching.